These 15 Docker commands are a must in every developer's arsenal. If you've never used Docker before, chances are you will at some point, especially if you work in a team. That's why we'll go through all of these commands so that you can get started with Docker in a blink of an eye. I want to keep this video short and educational, so if you are ready, let's get started. I'm assuming you're already familiar with what an image and a container is in the Docker world. If not, here's a TLDR. A container is launched by running an image. An image is much like a recipe that includes everything needed to run an application in a container. The code, a runtime, libraries, environment variables, configuration files, and so on. If an image is a recipe, then containers are basically meals prepared from those recipes. A runtime instance with its own state and processes. First command on the list is docker ps. You can see a list of your running containers with the command docker ps, just as you would in Unix-like systems with just a ps. Some useful tags include all for showing all the containers, because docker ps by default shows only running containers, also, adding quiet to docker ps will only show container IDs. I gotta say, docker ps is definitely used the most in my experience. Docker pull. Most of your images will be created on top of base images from Docker Hub registry. Docker Hub contains many pre-built images that you can pull and try without needing to define and configure your own. Images like Node, MySQL, Nginx and so on. To download an image or a set of images, we use docker pull. To identify specific images inside the repository, we can also use tags. If we don't specify a tag, docker engine uses the latest tag by default. So in the previous example, docker pulled the MySQL latest image. But if our application depends on a specific version of an image, we can specify that using a tag name, docker pull MySQL 5.6. Docker login. Oh, by the way, just like the way you authenticate yourself when using Git, you need to log into the Docker Hub in order to be able to pull and push images to your repository. Docker login will ask you for a username and a password as expected. Docker push. Super easy. Works the same way as a git command for pushing your changes, which in our case is our image. And you also need to run docker commit before pushing your changes to the repository. Docker images. Now we should have some docker images locally that we pulled from the docker hub registry and to confirm we can run docker images command to list all of the images that we have ever pulled or built. Docker build. The docker build command builds custom docker images from our docker file and the content. Context. Oh, also, remember the text that we specified to pull a specific version of an image? We can use the minus T flag to label the image name during the build, for example, docker build minus T image name dot, with the dot at the end signaling to build using the docker file from the current directory as a context. We're gonna talk about docker files in a separate short video, so make sure you subscribe to be notified when the video is out. Docker run. Alright, now that we have some images, we can try to create a container. Docker run runs a container based of an image. You can follow this on with other options such as minus it bash to then run bash within the container and get inside the container right after it's up and running. Here we also use the minus minus env option to set a mandatory environment variable and minus minus detach or just minus d option to run the container in the background. Without the detached mode, we'll be seeing the logs from our container. So to run any other commands, you'll need to create a separate window or put the process into the background with Ctrl Z. Don't do that. Also keep in mind that all of these commands have a lot of options that you can pass in as you can see. That's why I'm gonna leave a link to Docker's documentation in the video description so that you can dive deeper if you're interested. Docker logs. As soon as the container has started in the detached mode, use this command to still look into the logs of a container. You must specify a container and can use flags such as minus minus follow or just minus follow to follow the output of the logs in real time. Docker exec. Even though running containers are just computers living in their own world, you can still access the running container by running the following command. We already saw it in the docker run example, but you can still run this command at a later point as well. It's helpful if we for example want to access the mysql command line within the container and execute some mysql queries directly on the database. Docker volume ls. 
This lists the volumes, which are the preferred mechanism for persisting data generated and used by Docker containers. Imagine you have a database in your container and obviously we want to persist the data in there. That's why you need volumes. Volumes are basically hard drives for your computers. <clears throat> Sorry, containers. I mean, it's the same thing. Docker stop. This will simply stop one or more containers that you specify. A more direct way is to use docker kill command, which does not attempt to shut down the process gracefully first. Meaning it will ignore any warnings during the shutdown, just like when you unplug your computer when it's turning off. Docker RM. This removes one or more containers. If you think you won't need a specific container because you, for example, modified your Docker file, you can simply remove it and recreate it at a later point. When removing a container, error response from daemon, you cannot remove a running container. Stop the container before attempting removal or force remove. As it recommends, we can either stop the container first and then remove it, or use the minus F option to remove the container forcefully. Docker RMI. Just like the previous command, this command removes one or more images and not containers. As time goes by and you modify your images, old images still hang around, taking a lot of space. It's a good practice to clean them up with this command from time to time. Docker stats. Docker stats command returns a live data stream for your containers. To limit the data to one or more specific containers, specify a list of container names or IDs separated by space. You can also specify a stopped container, but stopped containers obviously don't have any stats. <laughs> Last but not least, to clean up your containers and images, you can actually use the previously mentioned commands and kind of chain them by using the output from one command as an input for another. For example, you can kill all running containers with docker kill dollar sign docker ps minus q inside brackets. Or you can delete all containers, including the stop ones, with docker rm dollar sign docker ps minus a minus q. And of course, you can also delete all the images with docker rmi with docker images minus q inside the brackets. Bonus tip, you can also use docker system prune to clean out any images, builds, etc. that might be hanging after all the commands you ran, just to be safe. If you are indeed a beginner, then you probably learned a lot about docker commands in this video. But the thing is, nobody uses only docker by itself. How would you manage multiple containers at the same time, for example? Do you go through all of them and run docker run for every single container? Luckily, no, and that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next video.